Now for the moment you've all been waiting for. Thank you for your patience. Uh, Jane Close Connolly is the seventh president of California State University, Long Beach. Dr. Connolly has an impressive scholarly record. She's the author, co-author, or editor of over 120 books, articles, and book chapters. Her latest book, Positive Psychology and Family Therapy, was co-authored with her husband, Dr. Kali W. Connolly, who joins us here today. She has received research, teaching, and service honors during her career. She serves on numerous journal, editorial, and community service boards, both the American Psychological Association and the, American, uh, and the Association of Psychological Science have honored Dr. Connolly with fellow status. Her research and development efforts in school safety, teacher quality, and student achievement have been supported by more than $20 million in external grants and contracts. Uh, Dr. Connolly has an impressive leadership record. Prior to assuming the presidency here, she was the interim chancellor at the University of California, Riverside. She's also held leadership positions at University of California, Santa Barbara, Texas A&M University, and the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Uh, Chris Miles, will you join me on stage, please? In case the audience is wondering about Chris's role, he is a sculpture wrangler. And uh, Jane, if you would join us. Uh, the meaning of that will become clear in a moment. Before handing the podium to President Connolly, I wish to welcome her with a special gift. This was crafted by an artist that many of us admire, Tony Marsh, a ceramicist in the School of Art. This gift has been designed to fit in a niche in the Miller House so that President Connolly will have a daily reminder that we welcome her warmly to Long Beach. Chris, will you unveil the gift? So please join me in welcoming the new president of California State University, Jane Close Connolly. <laughs> Thank you. Now, you don't want to make me cry before I start. That would be, that'd be so bad. Thank you, Dave, for that uh, uh, great introduction. And wow, artist Tony Marsh. You, you, you see why we put it back in the box, right? <laughs> They've seen me walk through rooms, and they know what it's like. I'm very grateful, the war very, very grateful for the warm introduction and the fabulous gift. I, I want to remind our presidential scholars, I think most of you are over there, right? Wave, yeah, good should keep in mind, uh, in a, as a career goal, become a university president. Do you notice what happens? They say nice things about you. They give you presents. It's great. It's wonderful. It's a thing to do, so keep that in mind, OK? Welcome, all students, faculty, staff, especially our presidential scholars and their families, emeriti faculty and emeriti staff. During the past eight months, I've encountered really a rare energy and generosity of spirit about which all of you should be proud. Interim President Don Para devoted hours each week, long agendas, true, to my beach education, as did Dave Dowell, Karen Nakai, Colleen Falwell, and the VPs and the deans. But when I mess up, it's not their fault. It's just that I sometimes didn't pay attention, I'm sure. Thanks, too, to the many faculty, staff, and students who have generously shared their perceptions about the beach and their best advice for the future. Keep it coming, and I really mean that. It's very important for me to know what's on your minds. Faculty, staff, students, presidential, scholars, and families, you can be sure that the beach has had a history of committed leadership. The history is worth celebrating in the names of Para, Alexander, Maxson, Anatole, McRae, Horn, Cooper, Simonson, McIntosh, and Peterson. All deserve stories, I'm sure, but special mention is certainly called for for June M. Cooper, who was actually the first woman to lead this great university as its interim president in 1988. <laughs> Uh, 
She was a longtime faculty member and eventually an executive at both the campus and the system level. She was an award-winning model and mentor and scholar to many, but especially African-American women and all students of color, and has a great legacy at the beach. Her granddaughter is a 2014 alum of uh, Cal State Long Beach, and she graduated a magna or a summa, you know, magna summa, one or the other. It was really great, cum laude, <laughs> right? It's great, I think Allison. I'm sure you've all um, you know, committed this to memory, or soon you will. There'll be a test at the reception. I'll be going around, OK? This is our mission, and Dave referred to it earlier. California State University Long Beach is a diverse, student-centered, centered, globally engaged public university committed to providing highly valued undergraduate and graduate educational opportunities through superior teaching, research, creative activity, and service for the people of California and the world. Everyone wants to be in a place like that, right? But what does this look like in action? What, what do we really do? And you've heard um, you know, some information from the provost about that, and I'll try not to um, uh, re be repetitious. And I have a rather long list, uh, but I know I've forgotten something. So please forgive me if I've forgotten something. And even better, both forgive me and send me what I forgot, and then I'll use it in my next speech, which would be really helpful for me. As you know, or you may know, that we have over 120 bachelor degrees and many master's degrees, plus several unique doctoral degrees that meet compelling state needs, as well as our students' dreams. We have strong connections with our community partners, and I'm so glad to welcome our mayor and president of Long Beach City College here today as evidence, further evidence, of the incredible strength we get through partnership with our city and our region. It's, it's unique uh, in the country. We're committed to students and we have high quality services supporting them from day one through graduation. Have hundreds of student clubs and organizations and a vibrant student life. Thanks very much to the leadership of the ASI. So thank you, Joe. Celebration, we celebrate diversity in all its kinds. And in the last eight, eight months, I've noticed some other things. We, we have fashion shows that a thousand people come to. Unbelievable. Our students are winning uh, research awards and see CSU-wide and national-wide uh, competitions. We have winning athletic teams, music programs. For example, I, I learned just the other day that our Wind Symphony is going to Korea in just a f actually a few days, right? That's pretty great. Uh, forensic, business, and public relations student teams have gotten high marks, high honors across the nation. We've won innovation honors. We have high LGBTQI pride. We've recently reorganized staff to better serve our AB 540 students. We've seen steady improvement in our graduation rate. We have cutting edge public art throughout our campus. Successful accreditations in many of our colleges. Faculty research that improves the safety and the economic intelligence of our region. And as mentioned early, well over 80,000 applicants as freshmen or transfer students. That's pretty great. And in 1978, we, had the lo we built the longest submarine sandwich in history <laughs> right here at the beach. And we're included in the Guinness Book of World Records for that. Yeah. I, don't know how, how did it, I don't know how long it was, but you know, maybe it's time for a longer one. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can't resist a campus like this. It's unbelievable. <laughs> what I've seen thus far is that we are a well-functioning, collaborative campus that is student-focused, obsessed with high-quality academic, research, scholarly, and creative acti activity, and deeply engaged in our community. You are a strong faculty, growing this year, as you've heard, by almost 60, and slated to grow again by another 60 next year. This is really important for student success. You're a dedicated staff, which also increased by approximately 43 personnel this year with our better budget, and we hope for continued improvement. You are a campus deeply committed to serving our diverse students, and nothing can be more important. I've been asked frequently about my first steps at the beach. And what I've thought is my first steps are like the first steps of our new students. I have to recognize, first of all, that I have a lot to learn. I didn't come with all the answers. So I have to ask a lot of questions. I'll be asking them 
to be sure that any barriers that we currently face in moving forward are not of our own making. If they are, let's stop doing that. Let's do something better, right? Uh, students, you'll be asking, uh, where's the library and stuff like that. I've already done that, so I know where the library is. So to... <laughs> Roman helped me with that. Oh, there he is right there. Yeah. I have to work and learn about our CSU system with hopes of leverage, leveraging its statewide reach to advantage our work. In the same way, you need to learn about Cal State Long Beach in a way to further your work and your careers. And I'll be devoting considerable attention to our first comprehensive campaign to bring more resources to our campus that are so desperately needed to continue our trajectory to excellence. And nothing helps us uh, inspire our donors more than our successful students, because that's what people want. That's who people want to invest in. I think we're on the right path. I'll be working hard to support and accelerate our progress, not introduce lots of new things. Because what I hear and see thus far is that Cal State Long Beach is actually a gateway to a world of opportunities for students through authentic relationships with faculty and staff that help students set high goals with hope and agency. We're a portal to opportunities for students that result in deep learning through internships, long-term assignments, or meaningful engagement with extracurricular activities. We're a model of success with diverse students from the US and the globe. And welcome our friends from Shanghai? China. Hello. <laughs> you see, if it's not on the piece of paper, I actually forget. Yeah, but uh, We're a campus on which faculty, staff, administrators are all working together for the success of our students. Of students who come to the beach as freshmen, we now graduate 64% in six years. That's a jump of almost 4%, right? Yeah, I'd look at Dave, because he knows all the numbers, yeah. And among our transfers, it's 78% in a total of four years. I'm sure we all want better, right? Yeah, but yeah, I deserve something. We all want to do better for the sake of our students, and it must come with a focus on quality, innovation, and caring. We are a community of high-quality faculty on the cutting edge of their disciplines, who engage students in the scholarship of their fields, and whose work receives national and international acclaim. I've been happy to know that the radiation hasn't reached our shores yet. We're watching the kelp, right? Your people, yeah. And, but I'm, I'm, I'm mixed about the fact that we have lots of white sharks out there. We also found that out with, with scientists from uh, Laura, uh, Dean Kingsford's uh, college. We're a, we're a campus of committed, highly dedicated staff, and this is really true, without whom the university could not achieve its goals. The staff is so critically important to our success. Yeah. Faculty and staff, you are the heart and soul of our university's commitment to student success, so thank you very much. I'm committed to maintaining all that I describe and to make all these things happen as the rule, the beach rule. I'm also motivated to make sure that others know we are a key institution in the US national priority to prepare the next generation of creative, able, productive citizens for the future. How do I know this? Well, I listened to Dave Dell. He, he, he may actually doubt that I ever listened to him, but you, you heard it here, right here, I do. And I, we have it up here, something that he wrote um, recently, in, in order for the US to remain competitive economically in the global knowledge economy, President Obama has established ambitious goals, ambitious college completion goals. The US cannot attain these goals without California. California cannot attain these goals without the CSU. Southern California is where the largest CSUs are located. We are literally at the center of the national strategy to boost US economic competitiveness. The stakes could not be higher. I really like that. I actually wish I'd said it myself. <laughs> and, and in future iterations of this speech, I'll stop giving him credit. <laughs> and, unless he's still sitting right there. But I, I hope we'll all take that to heart because this will attract attention to our university and further investment in our university. 
I have many goals, uh, but I don't want you to listen too closely. You know, sometimes people think that presidents say things and it's in code. Oh, she's gonna do this or that, right? I don't know any code. So when I have something really exciting and different to tell you, I'll just tell you that. So don't, don't make anything out of, on the subtle side of what I do here. There's no, there's no subtlety. My goals are that we prepare students for chosen careers and professions that don't exist yet. That we have students, that we, that we as a university contribute to solutions to global and local challenges such as sustainability, climate change, and global conflicts. In other words, help students and us invent our futures, not just make predictions about it. I have a goal that we be engaged in our local community and around the world. We have evidence of excellence in that already, but even more and more is needed. I was last night at an opening of a Long Beach Trauma Recovery Center supported by faculty from the College of Education. Very um, inspiring that we have our faculty and our student interns going out to make a difference to victims of violent crime or other trauma here in the city of Long Beach. It's so important. I want our students to become leaders and engage citizens in US democracy and to be proud boosters of athletic teams that sweep the competition and wins. How's that? Sweep, I like that. Sweep the competition and wins and an academic success. And we're doing that. We have some of the best GPAs and APRs and a, a slew of other acronyms uh, in, the, in the entire, in the entire um, division that we're in, so it's great news. My commitments to the beach community is that I will work hard. I'll support and encourage excellent performance for students, faculty, and staff. I'll celebrate and support the diversity that is the hallmark of Long Beach State. I'll develop an even sense, a, a stronger sense of belonging at the beach, I hope. I wanna offer many opportunities for self-development, recognize success, and talk forthrightly about needed changes. I want to offer all of you the optimal levels of autonomy to do the work that you know needs to be done and work to develop the necessary resources to make that happen. And always listen but suggest clear, challenging, but attainable goals. I'm also fully committed to a safe and nurturing campus that has no room for hate, violence, harassment, based on gender, gender identity, ethnicity, who you love, or any distinguishing personal characteristic. I want Cal State Long Beach, Long, Cal State Long Beach to be the leader, the national leader, in creating an environment where diversity in all its forms is respected. There is zero tolerance for violence on our campus. Some of you know that I'm from New York, so I have a tendency to like to get things done, but I promise to listen as long as I possibly can before I try to get things done. So please come and talk to me. Although a focus on a new leader's first 100 days is actually rather artificial and perhaps short-sighted given the actual time change takes to implement, I'm looking forward uh, to a very busy first 100 days. I, I actually have about 62 days left, I think. Um, my top goal is to know by day 101 uh, how I might add value to what we offer students. I want to be in a position to understand how to improve the conditions that support faculty success in their teaching and other scholarly endeavors. I want a clear idea by then about how to improve our fiscal, our physical, and our interpersonal contexts. So the whole Beach family has many opportunities to reach and surpass their professional goals. By the end of 100 days, I want to have met all of our key partners and many, many of our alums who are just the best evidence of our success as a university. I have joined a very successful organization, but we need to still be a hungry organization, one that wants a much improved graduation rate and importantly, no achievement gaps among our various groups of students a place that is the best, most a place that where the best, most creative and innovative faculty want to come and they want to stay, and the most professional staff choose to spend long careers, a place with a far greater number of full-time faculty, and a place that will remain the top choice of aspiring freshmen and transfer students in the state of California. I don't want much, but that's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> One of the complexities of all that all great universities face now is how to preserve 
the best of what they are and we are, while evolving to meet the new opportunities and demands of our time. We are the responsible stewards of our world's history in science, arts, humanities, mathematics, health, business, economics, medicine, leadership, education, literature, mu music, and so on. This is a huge responsibility, but one that new technologies have perhaps shaken. That is, knowledge depositories, just knowledge depositories, information, that's everywhere. But curated, vetted knowledge is still prized and rare in certain circumstances. We know that close, meaningful relationships are the basis for deep learning. I actually just learned that from Dan. Yeah, he, just, he just told us that, right? How do we keep all that while being accessible and responsive to exploding populations of college-ready Californians? We'll have to create that solution. No one has figured that out yet. I have some ideas, but I am confident that you all have more and better ones. In my view, universities have a rather sacred mission. We provide a path toward life success for all who are in the community. This is a big job. We don't manufacture widgets, although I think our engineers do a pretty spectacular job doing whatever they do. That's all right. We do create environments, conditions, incentives, experiences, and expectations that push all of us to build on our strengths for a better city, a better state, country, world, and for ourselves. We must invent a future that is sustainable, informed, healthy, artistic, civic-minded, and optimistic. We create knowledge. There's nothing more important than that. Cal State Long Beach's progress started 65 years ago and has been nurtured through generations of leadership, faculty, staff, alums, and students. I declare that my declaration, I remembered to get that in, uh, <laughs> to promise to do my very best to keep the promise, I'll promise to try to keep the promise made by the state of California to offer excellent education at the most affordable cost to Californians with the drive and talent to transform their lives and their families' lives through education. In that way, our democracy is preserved for the next generation. What we do here is just that big. Thank you. Go Beach. Thank you, President Connolly. Now, I would like to invite all of you to a reception in honor of President Connolly that will be held on the Carpenter Center Terrace just in front of where we are right now. This will give you an opportunity to express your welcome to her. Uh, thank you very much. We are adjourned. <laughs>